Nothing that has been made was made without word. So being crowned with glory, the word glory in the Old Testament means weight, substance, and authority. So in other words, Adam would speak in the earth and God would back him up. But Adam sinned. Skip 4,000 years to Romans 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. So now man speaks and the earth doesn't respond. The Bible says that the earth is in the pains of childbirth like a mother. The Bible says it's groaning. One scripture says it's rocking and reeling like a drunken man. It said it was a waiting of people in the earth that are the sons of God. Then it goes on to say, who are these sons of God? Those who are led by the Spirit. These are the sons of God. The earth is waiting on anointed people who are full of the Spirit. Excuse me, it's not waiting on the Democrats, Republicans, or Libertarians. We need God. We need the people of God to get us out of the mess we in. And the earth is not waiting on a new political party. It is waiting on God's people to raise up their voice like a trumpet and let his light be shown in the darkness. Come on, somebody. Shout amen. In your mouth, the tongue is the power of life. You take concepts, dreams, and visions, but they are inside of you until you speak them. When you speak them, you're giving life to spiritual things that they may manifest in the earth realm. Nothing that has been made was made without word. So in the beginning was word. So if it's been made, that's where it came from. Are we all on the same page? We've gone into this in depth, those of you visiting, okay? Next verse, go to 12 through 14. Same chapter, going down a few verses. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, those who believe in his name. Powerful verse right here. Those who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man. Quit being hung up on how you got here. It didn't have anything to do with the will of blood or the will of flesh or the will of man. It had to do with being born of God. Your life didn't begin here. Your life didn't begin with your past. Your life didn't begin with your biological mother and father. Your life began because you were born out of the will of God. You were born out of God. Now that is a powerful statement because it makes people feel uncomfortable because that which is of goat is goat. That which is of tiger is tiger. That which is of tomato is tomato. That which is of squash is squash. And that which is of God you are born of God. You are royalty. You are sons of the Most High God. He has birthed you by his seed. The seed of Jesus lives on the inside of you. And that's why he has put his potential on the inside of you. That the very things he did, greater works shall ye do. <laughs> because you were born out of word. Okay? And the word became flesh. And dwell among us. Be careful how you talk because words always become flesh. <laughs> and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Talking about Jesus. The word became Jesus. The angels announced and he shall be God with us. You shall call him Emmanuel. God with us. The word flesh. Okay, so in the beginning was the word and everybody who has been born again, he gave the right to be his children because they've been born of God. Yeah. I just read it. Next verse, can we go deeper? First John 5. Well, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I'm going to come back to you and give you another chance. I'm going over here. <laughs> I'm preaching to the love. Is there any love over here on this side? Okay, there we go. I'm not mad at you. We're cool. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. Not born of flesh, not born of blood, nor of the will of man, but born of God. That which is born of God overcomes the world. 
The world is not out there. First John chapter 2 and verse 15 said, These three are in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I am fighting not things around me. I'm fighting things in me. The thing in you, if it is not conquered, will create the mesh that is around you. For out of the heart flow the issues of life. Your heart creates your issues, not your devil. How did I get here? This is a mess. I, I bind the devil in Jesus. You bind in the wrong devil. <laughs> Go look in the mirror and bind that one. That's the one you need to bind. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These three are in the world. And the Bible says, and the lust of those fade. That's why a marriage based on covenant love, agape, can last forever. But you get married out of lust, I told you last week, you'll wake up one morning and say, ooh, I'm sick of you. It fades, and you got to move on to the next one. And guess what? It fades. And then you move on to the next one. And the more you chase, the emptier you get. It's just the way. Ain't it amazing how true the Word of God is? Isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing things pinned eternally thousands of years ago are dropped right in our closet today and have relevance. Okay? For he who is born of God overcomes the world. These are the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So when you are born of God, you have been given the power to overcome you. Yeah. Ephesians 2.20. Well, at least you never say, my pastor breaking it down. He's breaking it down. Yeah. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It didn't say you would, but you should. And whether or not you walk it out will not be up to God. It'll be up to you. The Bible says that your days were written in a book before one of them came to be. So God has already written a book with your name on front of it called The Life Of and insert your name right there. And all of your days have already been written. That is why we've got to change the way we pray and the way we approach God. Because we pray like we want God to move. God has already moved. Jesus has already said, it is finished. So God has already set out your days. And then Jesus has finished the work to make sure that you have the righteousness and the legal power to go and possess everything that God has prepared for you. It's all done and it's all finished. So some of us like, I need God to move in my life. I need God to move. You don't need to move God. God's trying to move you. In other words, he's already prepared it, but he's got to take you out of it and take you into the next thing. Take you out of the last thing. Take you into the next thing. God's not about to move. God's about to take you into something that he's already prepared. How many of you like knowing that it's already there waiting on you? God's already prepared it, and he ain't got to get up and do something for me today. It was here waiting on me when I got here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yay! All right. Let me go here. Now you're getting into my... This is my stuff I teach pastors. I'm going to pull out of it, then I'm going to give it to you. You are his workmanship. Your life was prepared and laid out before you got here. You should walk in it. But you were created in Christ. Now, Christ is not Jesus' last name. <clears throat> Some of you have been in church forever. That's funny. There's other people in here like, really? <laughs> Christ describes his function. Like if you say, Ron is my pastor. Okay, pastor's not my last name. But pastor describes my function for and to you and the relationship that I have to you. 
He is Jesus who functions as the Christ. The word Christ means anointing. Say that, anointing. Everybody needs to know that word. The anointing is descriptive of the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you, which was the intent of Jesus. I get frustrated and amazed and mystified at churches that are content with just bringing you to the cross. Because the cross is not a landing spot, it's an entry point. The word holy means separate and other. Before I put you on the potter's wheel, I already had experiences with you. You had the kingdom. You were chosen in Christ before I ever said, let there be light. I put you in a place where you need to embrace your otherness and your separateness. God had a plan for you even before you were born, and your life is full of purpose. In this series, Pastor Ron will help you understand your assignment and how to operate in it. God has always made everything out of word, and if we can get rid of our criticism and begin to speak the word, then everything that God's going to create in your life will come out of word, just like everything he created in the universe came out of word. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. You know, when you talk about living life on assignment, you're talking about a life of significance. You're talking about a life of impact. You're talking about a life where you know you're making a difference. And that's the way I believe God put us here to, the reason God put us here to live. I've always used the example, he said, you're the salt of the earth. You're a light in a dark place. You're a city set on a hill. In other words, you're here to have an effect on the people in the environment where God places you. I'm so glad we've had this time together. We're gonna to get back to the Word in just a moment, but let me stop right here and just take a moment to thank those of you who've been supporting Ron Carpenter Television, many of you for weeks, many of you for months, many of you for years, and yeah, I'm dating myself, some maybe even for decades. 1998 is when we first started our TV programming, and to this day, God has been good, and you've been good, and you've been gracious, and I thank you for that. The importance of sowing seed into kingdom uh, ventures, into kingdom ministry, into the word going forth, that those who have not heard it to be able to hear, there is no greater ground that your gift, that your offering, that your seed can go in. And as surely as the sun comes up tomorrow morning, the seed will multiply. And I would just ask those of you, whether you've been giving or not regularly, or maybe it's your first time ever, would you consider becoming a covenant partner? Would you consider becoming a monthly partner where we know month in, month out, month in, month out, we can depend on you to help us do what we do. And we wanna involve more people in our circle because we wanna go further and we wanna get more airtime and we wanna go into more countries. We wanna go into more places in the earth. We want to be strategic and how we do what we do, and we need your help. Would you consider many places where you could give, and many, so many people are doing wonderful things for the kingdom of God. But for whatever reason, God has given us favor with you, and I'd just like to ask you, would you increase that which God has had you do? Would, if you've never given, would you give that one-time gift or consider becoming a monthly partner? If you would, we have this gift right here that we're gonna send you just to say thank you, not to pay you back, we can't pay you back. Just to say thank you and just to acknowledge the fact that we know you have shown value to us and we are so grateful for it. I wanna thank you for all that you do. There's so many ways where you can bless us and we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you, call in, write in, mail us, let us know. If you get one of those covenant partner letters, tear off that back and send it back with your gift and just let us know. Pastor, we are with you and we're believing in this kingdom message going forward.
Well, I don't want to take anything else away from the Word. I want to make sure that we can close out and close out big. So let's get back and let's finish what God's saying to us today. Jesus self-described himself as a door. What is a door? It's a place of entry. There is a kingdom life for you. But you have to walk through Jesus, the door. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. He is the initial experience. Why? Because the goal of Jesus was that you be filled with the spirit that filled him. That's what it means to be anointed. After Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, he came up, the heavens opened up, and the Spirit of God descended on him in bodily form like a dove. The next words out of Jesus' mouth, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. We didn't hear anything about an anointing for 30 years. Then when the Holy Spirit came and rested on him, he said, now I'm anointed. The whole goal of Jesus was to remove the sin, baptize you in water so that the dove can come. You are supposed to get up every morning full of the Spirit, living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, the Spirit talking to you, the Spirit giving you insight, the Spirit giving you discernment, the Spirit giving you words of wisdom, the Spirit giving you words of knowledge, the Spirit giving you supernatural faith. All these things are yours. And when I will not talk about the Holy Spirit, I deprive you of this entire adventure and journey that God has purposed you to live. And it frustrates me when preachers won't go there anymore. How dare me withhold that from you? The Holy Spirit is the only one who knows your assignment. (laughs) Thank God for motivational speakers, but Tony Robbins don't know your assignment. (laughs) And it gives you the power to do what you need to do. Campus on the East Coast was wiped out, had to be totally restarted, but I was fine. I had energy. You know why? Because I'm in purpose. That's right. yes, sir. We had 5,712 people in attendance the last day before shutdown here. The day we opened up, we had 349. Mm. Went from 5,700 to 300. You don't think that messed with me? But I came here every day, energetic. I preached the 300, then the 400, then the 500, then the 600, then the 700, then the 800. Why? Because I get shaped. Because I get up with a sense of purpose on my life. And if you know God has put you there, then it don't matter if it's 5,000 or 300. You get the significance of knowing your life is making a difference and you're doing what you were called to do. I'm going to give somebody 10 seconds to give God a radical shout because I feel something prophetic stirring in this house right now. Yeah, come on, give him some glow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. High five your neighbor and say, live on purpose. Come on, say, live on purpose. <laughs> now, man, I wish I could just read you all the context, but I'd be teaching on assignment for six years. <laughs> it's hard to just pluck scriptures out. I really don't even like doing that because when preachers don't give you the context of something, they can twist it and make it mean anything they want. So go back and test me. When you go home, read it within its context, but for the sake of time, I gotta plug some out. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but has now been revealed. We live in a great day. Everybody from the Old Testament back longed and prophesied for what we live. What is this mystery? Been revealed to his saints. Next verse, please. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery. There's a mystery, and it is rich in substance. What is it? Rich to this mystery among the Gentiles. The Gentiles is everybody non-Jew. Okay? God loves Jewish people, but remember, he came to his own, and his own received him not. That's why they're praying at the Wailing Wall right now, because they missed him. So when he came to his own and his own received him not, he went to non-Jew. That's us, Gentile. Okay? Unless you're in here and you're Jewish. To them, 
God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is the anointing in you. It is our hope of glory. Adam was made in the image and glory of his God. Yes. Psalm chapter 8 says that Adam was crowned with glory and honor. Earth is a physical expression of heaven. Adam is a physical expression of God. He was built Hebrew in the imago Dei, means the image of his God. So when God was making Adam out of the dust of the earth, he was looking at himself. Okay. I'm going to go buy myself a steak. I'm preaching way above salad. Yeah, way above salad. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got thinking about steak. I forgot I was really on something hot. <laughs> Adam, yeah. Adam was a physical expression of his father. Earth was a physical expression of heaven. That's why the first place in earth was called Eden, which means paradise or heaven. Okay. So God creates with word. And God said, and there was. Everything that was made was made by word, and there was nothing that was made that was made. So God the Father reached over and took the word and made it through word. God Almighty. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Okay. Now, Adam was crowned with God's glory. Which means God told Adam, said, whatever you call it, that's what it is. Well, that's the way God operated. So being crowned with glory, the word glory in the Old Testament means weight, substance, and authority. So in other words, Adam would speak in the earth and God would back him up. He was crowned with glory. So Adam would call it something and heaven would get behind what he said. But Adam sinned. Skip 4,000 years to Romans 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. Glo so now man speaks and the earth doesn't respond. So I could go off right here. The Bible says that the earth is in the pains of childbirth like a mother. Bible says it's groaning. One scripture says it's rocking and reeling like a drunken man. It says it's awaiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Didn't say it was awaiting the second coming of Jesus. It said it was awaiting a people in the earth that are the sons of God. Then it goes on to say, who are these sons of God? Those who are led by the Spirit. These are the sons of God. The earth is waiting on anointed people who are full of the Spirit. Excuse me, it's not waiting on the Democrats, Republicans, or Libertarians. We need God. We need the people of God to get us out of the mess we in. And the earth is not waiting on a new political party. It is waiting on God's people to raise up their voice like a trumpet and let his light be shown in the darkness. Come on, somebody. Shout amen. I'm trying to find a place to shut down. At least they say, give him five more minutes. Give him five more minutes. I've been preaching 30 minutes. Give me five more minutes. Woo! <laughs> now, so Adam sinned. Adam is the federal head, which means when he sinned, all sin. Romans chapter 5 says when he sinned, all sin. When he died, all died. So if an Adam screws it up, it's going to take an Adam to fix it. So Jesus is called the second Adam. <laughs> so the second Adam came to undo all the mess the first one did. So here comes Jesus as the second and the last Adam. Okay. And what do we do? 
and we beheld the glory. And the word became flesh and we beheld the glory. What does that mean? Jesus went around and started talking to stuff. Jesus didn't put his hands on things. He didn't go there and lay his hands on Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. He sent his word in there. And here comes this carcass. Broke fever with his words. Looked at a fig tree. May nobody ever eat from you again. Looks at the waves, tells the wave to quit crashing. Looks at the wind and tells it to quit blowing. Finally, we're seeing what glory looks like. That's the way Adam was supposed to operate. But he sinned and screwed it up, so here comes Jesus. And he said, this was the way I originally intended for you to function, that everything that happens will happen with your word. Ah! There is this amazing life that is their life where he promised peace, He promised blessing, he promised favor, he promised joy, he promised protection, he promised healing. There's so many things that are there, the promises of God. And Jesus purchased those promises and made them yours and mine on the cross of Jesus Christ. If you don't know him today, the Bible says that these things are made available once a person becomes born again. Yep. What does it mean to be born again? Not born again physically, but born again here. When you ask Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Savior, if you'd like to, the prayer goes something like this, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you died and rose again for my salvation. I thank you that you know me and that you hear me. And thank you, God, that I can run to you with my problems, with my brokenness, with my chains, with my addiction, with my sin, and you are not ashamed. I come before you now and ask you to wash me in the blood of Jesus and forgive me of my sins. I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior, and I put my faith in you today. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let us know. We want to hear. Write us, email us, call us, do whatever you got to do, but let us know. And until next time, God bless you. The word holy means separate and other. Before I put you on the potter's wheel, I already had experiences with you. You had the kingdom. You were chosen in Christ before I ever said, let there be light. I put you in a place where you need to embrace your otherness and your separateness. God had a plan for you even before you were born, and your life is full of purpose. In this series, Pastor Ron will help you understand your assignment and how to operate in it. God has always made everything out of word, and if we can get rid of our criticism and begin to speak the word, then everything that God's going to create in your life will come out of word, just like everything he created in the universe came out of word. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.